All right, I'll call this meeting to order from 6, 2019. Okay. Resolve that the minutes for the July 16, 2019 regular council meeting to July 16, 2019 meeting of the town of Swanner, sorry, the July 16, 2019 Swan River Municipal Developers Meeting and the July 23rd, 2019 Committee of a Whole Meeting be received and approved. Moved by Councillor Tony, seconded by Councillor Friesen. All in favor? Against? It's carried. <coughs> Result of the agenda for the August 6, 2019 regular meeting of Council be approved. Moved by Councillor Tony, seconded by Councillor Morio. All in favor? It's pulled and carried. <coughs> Okay, we can skip right down to communications, 6.1, uh, possible resolution in support of the Rail Safety Week. We have a letter there from CN requesting for this uh, letter of support or this letter of support. I guess it's probably something that we can do. I don't think we need a resolution for that, but if anyone else agrees that we can support this Rail Safety Week. Okay. I would uh, propose that we put a resolution forward declaring the week of September 23rd to 29th as Rail Safety Week. Okay. So uh, get uh, Mr. Crowell to design that resolution for us. Was it in there already? Oops. Oh, sorry. Well, there we are. Uh, whereas Rail Safety Week is to be held across Canada from September 23rd to the 29th, 2019, whereas it is in the public interest to raise citizen awareness of the dangers of ignoring safety warnings at level crossings and trespassing on rail property to reduce avoidable deaths, injuries, and damage caused by incidents involving trains and citizens. Whereas Operation Lifesaver is a private a public and private partnership whose aim is to work with the public rail industry, governments, police services, media, and others to raise rail safety awareness. Whereas CN has requested town, the town council to adopt this resolution in support of its ongoing efforts to raise awareness, saves lives, and prevents injuries in communities, including our municipality. It is hereby resolved that the town of Swan River Council supports National Rail Safety Week to be held from September the 23rd to the 29th, 2019. Moved by Councillor Wintoni, second by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. <coughs> okay, 7.1 Superintendent Works Report. Oh, six. 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 Sixteen. Uh, six one. Isn't there, isn't there a further correspondence about the RM proposal? No. Mm -hmm. Six two. I thought that was a contentious issue. <laughs> something just happened. Something just happened. Yeah, because the other one went away. Mine went. I'll just refresh and see what happens here. Still, apparently, it's no longer important. Just refresh the income it's gone. 6.2, 6 6.1 actually disappeared, Mr. Crow. Okay. Oh, okay. So I'll do this. Six point. Okay, 6.1 on uh, the notice of public hearing for application for rezoning the municipality of Swan Valley West. I guess that's just information there if we, we can attend. I presume it's for us to determine whether there's an issue. Right. Uh, no, it's actually just more communication, just to let you know what's there. If, if there is an issue, then go ahead. But really, it's uh, anything like this should be on a council agenda, just to update all the councillors. Okay. And then if we did have an issue there, then we would, we would either have some participation in the hearing then. Councillor Wintoni. Mr. Poole, any issues with this proposed? Well, I haven't, I'll be honest, I haven't looked at the Swan Valley West zoning 
bylaws, if the theory of the one, but I'm not sure if there's just something that we would take over in the future. Yeah, I, but I don't think that's how we should be chopping up our land and putting it in massive acres, but that's just my own personal opinion. So I, I would have to review their new zoning bylaws in order to be a professional opinion. So the the proposed lot is larger than the other proposed or other lots that are situated on that property pro on that street and the rest of those properties correct yeah. or is it just in, no, enlarged to show the lot no it's quite a bit larger uh, I can't say exactly what the area it is but uh, when, when you develop like that it's, it's very hard to get services in because it's very very expensive for that one so then in your opinion we should be providing some sort of letter indicating that to, to Swan Valley West and somebody speaking on that behalf yeah we could draft up something go ahead Councilor Lightning and some wife I think it's their land it's their bylaws if that's what they want I don't think the town should be interfering with it personally Councilor Lightning and um I'm assuming like the third Avenue West, that's the street that is one of our streets, correct? No. Oh, no. Okay, no, I did. But yeah. That's the street where I'm on the Okay, because I'm just thinking it was, we're so close. Um, if they're looking at any potential development or whatever, using our services, like having irregular lots like that may be an issue that they may want just be cautioned of. So. I think that's what it would be. Like we're, we're notified because we're within the notification range. Right. right? So, so I think it's just maybe just as a cautionary thing that if there's feet of further expansion or whatever, if they're looking to tie into more urban type services for that area, is that. Yeah, there, there may be a, uh, a justified reason for, yeah. for this. I just don't know. But if we put on record with a letter saying just as a cautionary note that this is down the road, that could be. We have like no formal just uh, concerns, just as a, a thinking forward. Council Antoni. I do agree with Councilor Morio on that regard that we should advise that homeowner because I, I'm sure I, that it's going to be a, you know, a housing opportunity, obviously moving for, to a re, uh, residential single family zone to housing to the possibility of that becoming town of Swan River land or to have a serviced property that there are will be higher associated costs with that it'd be great to be up front and say that that it could be a possibility not, sorry not that it would hinder the decision but being proactive is way better than being reactive council great um, in my view, this is the kind of thing that would best be referred to a committee of the whole where we could have more private discussions about long range issues because our reason for intervening potentially is something that is not readily or publicly known or publicly part of our public, the public domain. And so can we send this to the committee of the whole for a discussion as to what how this fits into longer range plans and whether or not we should have a form of intervention um, of any form that is whether we should intervene by sending notice whether we should take um, the uh, non-interventionist with the position of council or right or whether we should actually take an interventionist approach uh, i think that we need to have some detailed discussion and having you know, mr pool or somewhere mr pro or somebody uh, provide some background as to what their thoughts are in terms of how it fits with their issues would be helpful to all of us and, and rather than us because uh, otherwise we'll get caught up in, a, in, a, in making a bad decision okay i think it's fair to say that we'll save that for those uh, discussions that we'll <clears throat> okay is that everything on that then so we'll move on to report today's uh, 7.1 superintendent of works so i'll read the result of the superintendent of works report be received moved by councillor and tony seconded by councillor delorier 
discussion and questions to Mr. Poole. <coughs> Go ahead, Mr. Um, Mr. Poole, I read in the there that we were done our patching. Um, I noticed there, there's still a couple patching, like one right behind the hospital on 9th and then on 4th Street South. Are those getting done this year or is there a reason why they're... Uh, we'll be either putting calcium in those or putting uh, cold mix patch in the field. We usually have a cutoff date in spring where if we excavate, say, past May 15th, uh, we will not have, it's just too expensive to, to hot, put hot mix paving in there because we know it's going to settle substantially. Uh, so we, we, we let it go through a freeze thaw cycle, then we spend the money on hot mix. So, but we will be putting calcium on or a cold mix in those patches. <clears throat> Any further questions? Go ahead. Um, also understand I heard today that we had some uh, software issues uh, at the water treatment plant over the weekend. Um, has that been resolved? Or uh, yeah, we had good. our uh, programmer slash electrician come from Virginia this morning, and so he gave us an estimate on what it's going to take to to uh, repair our problems. So it is a hardware problem uh, in the computers at the water treatment plant. So we've lost our our SCADA, our alarms. So we do have our emergency plant. Well, not an emergency. We're not in an emergency. Everything's running fine. It's just that we have to check the plant every day manually to ensure uh, ensure everything's running properly. And of course, just a little more awareness on the fire department side of, of if there is a fire and when we need to know right away and guys down there. So it will be the plan to repair it. <coughs> so that part where that's the stuff that you were telling us a couple of years back that's in the plan to be upgraded eventually. Uh, the, that's the PLCs. That's that's going to be for the, or I guess as you say, started this year in design, but done next year. The PLCs is what's keeping it running right now. Councilman Tony. All right, I've got a series of questions for you, Mr. Pools. So bear with me. Um, mowing grass, and I know that I've asked a few times now. How is that coming in regards to just trimming and making our our community? more beautiful on the uh, respected highways coming into town. Yeah, for the, for the public works employees, we, we just couldn't get anybody to do that. The work crew said they did have time to get out there and do the streetlight signs and culverts. I don't, don't believe they made it since our last meeting. So I'll have to talk to you to see what went wrong. Are they, the work crew is still with us, correct? Yeah. Or, so they possibly could do it once before the end of the year at least to just tidy it up a little bit. Okay, um, I'm going to go in order as as um, as it goes on here. Uh, back lanes, trimming back lanes. Does that mean and blading back lanes? Just in regards to Seventh Avenue North. Just making sure that we are looking at that one more carefully than I mean all of them for sure. But that one had expressed negative uh, impacts in the past. So if we could just yeah. ensure that somebody has a look at that one. I met with one of the residents on the, on that street. And we have a list of that lanes that are needed to Okay, that's good to hear. Um, and just cemetery mowing, how is how is everything looking at the cemetery? I haven't been there, haven't been there yet in quite some time. How are we, how does that, how has that been looking and how's it going? Uh, I know we're receiving more complaints than, than recent years, but uh, you know, there's lots of weeds out there. It's dry and all the water pump is out for a few weeks, but uh, you know, that's we've got two mores. They're they're getting used. There's there's a lot of settling out there. Uh, it could be a reason why the grass is unevenly cut. But uh, with the pesticide ban, we're not allowed to spray, so the weeds get to go crazy. It's tough to deal with those weeds. As far as the whippersnipping around the, the graves with 
with, with us letting people have whatever they want 30 inches in front of that grave they just stay away and the weeds grow and the grass grows up in between that stuff so it's uh yeah, we, we just do not move that stuff, move or snip it and put it back. We don't have time for that. So it's, you know, we'll, we'll, and I think that's uh, an item in our next committee of the whole meeting. So I'm sure that will be discussed further on what our policy is going to entail in the future. Perfect. Um, then I'm going to jump to the bottom and then go back to one. Issues with current land sale process on undeveloped lots. You want to talk about that, or are we? Did you want to save that to the committee of the whole? Uh, I will be an item on the committee of the whole. I actually, we actually got an email from one of our purchasers regarding exactly what I was talking about when I made this last week. Uh, it's just fairness, I guess, in development, and there's an argument there, though. It's it's really. I think we need to decide how we are going to develop undeveloped lots in town and how we how we go about doing that we want it piecemeal and one at a time and that's what they want that's what they get they have to pay that's fine but if we want it you know fair for everyone on the block then we need to set some policies in place and enforce them so and i guess because i'm new to this can you tell me in the past what that looks like when somebody did develop a piece of pro or purchase a piece of property that isn't developed in terms of electricity how does how does that work work in the past i mean they would probably say they bought use the the property in question because you know which obviously which one we're talking about how do how would have that happened in the past the 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 projected buyer has to pay for everything what did the town what was the town's role in that in the it, past it is it was at least in my experience it's different almost on every development in town we've we've almost tried everything so we ideally we have a developer who wants to develop a set amount of lots the more lots he develops the less costs he has but when you know when a 20 to 30 lot development takes 25 30 years to pay back we're not going to get a lot of that so the that's a complex issue that, that deals with a lot of different variables but uh and we know the town started municipal developers corporation in the 80s to help local developers i guess it's not really to help local developers it's to help development in the town to 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 get done properly to get all lots on that one street even if it is one street not five all to have underground service all to have cable, telephone, whatever, and, and yep, the rest of the taxpayers paid for that. So in the past, municipal developers has paid for it. There's also been private developers who have paid for it. The town, and we, the town has also done it outside of municipal developers, where we just kind of get a few lots at a time, and and, uh, and that's it. Like there'd be, a, there'd be an entire block where only four, certain, four lots got serviced, they were fully you know, do another four so I, I think a, a variety of things have been tried and I think that's the you know uh, definitely an item that I think needs to just be addressed when we talk about entire green space undeveloped properties and then going into cell one there's going to be a lot of initial costs and a lot of emails that we just received today of how on fair that looks but the question is, is how bad do they want to look there so they another question in regards to that do you feel in the past that with the develop development of lots because i'm sure that there's been properties or streets that only one one lot has been purchased did you in the past have you found when one is developed that more come so the old saying if they build it they will come do you see, have you seen that in the past? Were there streets where one individual has purchased one lot and then more start growing, not necessarily a large development like we've seen on, on two streets in the past? Uh, Perhaps that could be an incentive to to sell more lots on, the, on that street? Yeah, I think, it, I think it's definitely it may be expensive now, but your end product is better when you plan. And that is, I guess, you just 
you can't argue against that when you make a plan and you and you decide that this whole street is going to be uh, underground hydro you make that decision up front instead of now if we leave it to the owners it, we're going to get overland hydro oh absolutely and that's what you're going to just have the cheapest cost possible and for hydro to come in if this was a 30 lot development hydro would come in 30 separate times the entire cost of servicing all of those lots is going to be well over what it would be to do them all at once right at the start and try and make your money back of course that's that complex issue of we have trouble making our money back once we develop these empty lots i mean, i think that's enough for this and then the rest will be to the I don't committee know if I of answered that I, I i i think that's enough information for me at this point but i do think that that is that i have mr kroll add that to the committee of a whole meeting so that will be further challenged and debated between council and then my last one in regards to um, the meeting that we had today in regards to the landfill I'm just curious as to when the further discussion will be with that or is that something as well that we're going to move to committee of a whole I think I would wait for the RM to to make their decision uh, I believe it's next week and whether they make it or not, I'll be contacting Bill and Cheryl to see what happens. And then I, I think ultimately they need to make that decision um, what they're going to do with their recycling. And then we can discuss details. On but I think that decision uh, reflects on, on what our decision is in regards to the building, yes, no? Well, we're 50-50 partners, but go ahead, Councilor Gary. But just on that point, um, I think there are, well, so I clarified, but there are two distinct issues. One, we need to decide tonight, in my view. The second needs more information and needs to be decided at a later point. The, the, the issue of them using half or more of the building for their recycling should be a no brainer. They're quite candidly, they're half owners, we're not using it. Um, and as long as they're paying their proportionate share of the operating cost, that is, it increases the heating and we're not using much of the heating and so on, they pay whatever their share is, then it's self-evident they can use it. I mean, the agreement, if you can call it an agreement, is so badly worded, it doesn't cover things like utilizations and independent ownership and, and what to do in the case of dissolution. There's a, a thousand, a thousand, there's a, quite a large number of things that would have been put in by should have been put into the agreement, let's leave it that. But in terms of this, I think we need to do a resolution that says that they can operate or, or I actually think there's a different resolution. The resolution I would propose is something different that says that we delegate to management negotiation of the terms for them to use half of the, their, their half of the building, how they, you know, how we can negotiate. Because really it's about them working out the costs, how we, how we account for the costs. I don't think anybody here suggests they can't use half the building during big year. So that's what I think we should do is just delegate to the CAO or his de designate such, such the authority to negotiate with them for operational costs and, and give them the authority to enter into an agreement for the utilization. And I have you know, I'll leave to the CAO the drafting and the wording of that bench and move it. And we're done this at the end of this. We're voting on a resolution right now, but we can definitely. No, that, one. Well, yeah, that's yeah. what I'm suggesting. But um, yeah, I would point on that later. Okay. okay, well, that's a good idea, though. And then the other piece, which is the household hazard waste thing, is, is a broader issue that we need to discuss. Yes. Okay, um, just on the cemetery, one, one point there is that they, we did have a larger crew working at the cemetery last week to get things kind of cleaned up a little bit take care of some issues there, I think. But um, the one thing that we talked about, and I don't know if you found out, but with the ban on on pesticides, golf courses, I think, are exempt from it. Are cemeteries not exempt from that? They're not exempt. Anything that's regularly cut. Yeah, I read the article last week. There's no wording in there whatsoever for cemeteries or burial grounds or anything like that. Okay, any other questions to uh, Mr. Poole? Okay, I'm, so, no, that's fine. I'm, I'm all done. No 
worries. Thank you. Carry on. Yeah. Okay. On the question, I'll pay for my well, counselor Craig. Just I, this isn't directly, but it rose up from the council of twenty three. Do do we still have an account receivable from from municipal developers? Can we have a lot of town, town so. have a large receivable? Yeah. Yes. Should, then shouldn't we sort of discuss that and again? Through the resolution, but should we refer to the committee the whole that whole issue of how we do developments? That was a, a, a sorry, large part of what council was, and I was thinking through the entire time. Perhaps that's something that we should have as, as a part of that of a committee um, of a committee the whole or a committee decide right. because that that really is a policy issue that we should have resolved. Isn't it? So I don't know whether we need resolutions for those two, Mr. Crow, or whether we can just put them on. No, I'll just put them on. Okay, and I don't need, we don't need to discuss them further. Thank you. So all in favor of the question or the resolution? Opposed? It's carried. Okay, 7.21, result of the July 2019 fire report be received. Moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor when Tony discussion, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Let's see, I'll come to a point later. Okay. Uh, we did some two on one already. Uh, resolved that the July two thousand nineteen handy van report be received. Moved by Councillor when Tony, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion. All in favor? Can, can we have at some point a discussion on handy, handy van utilization? This comes partly from personal, but partly from other people, just in terms of when we run our hours, because um, I have a thought on that. So I don't care whether we do it in committee or we do it here or we do it in another meeting. We just at some point want to have a discuss. Well, here's the issue. The issue is we're at 8.30 to 4.30, which might be to Friday, which is probably not the best timing. For the residents that are using it, it's actually not the best. And so I, want, I just want to talk about that as a policy matter. Councillor Memorial. I do believe we offer evening and weekend services if they pre book it during office hours. We're told expressly not. That's why I want to raise this. Because if we, if we do, if you tell me that's the policy, then that'll be fine. I, I Because that was just changed about a year and a half ago to start offering weekend and evening, not pre book. Because I, I'll, I can dig out the resolution please. on that. So. Okay, but, so, but we can add that still to that committee of the whole because it's one little piece that we can yeah, add over. Exists, and that's yeah. why and if there's definitely a need or a change that needs to be done, then you need to look at that. Because that was the whole purpose of us hiring the two couple of casuals uh, was to cover off the Fine. weekend. It's all good because that's exactly the point that I was about to raise. I'll dig out that resolution. Thank you, Councilor. Could I have a mover and seconder on this motion? Uh, the mover on the handyman report yes. uh, was Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor White. Thank you. Or was it Councillor? Oh, okay, uh, correction. Councillor Wintoni. <coughs> okay, all in favor? Carried. Okay, 7.3, the vet committee. Um, that's my thing, so that there's some information there that's coming down on that board. And as you can see in the information, or hopefully you can see, I'll zoom in a little bit, it's not, you see what they did before and what they're proposing to do in the future. And so it's not been voted on, um, it will be voted on our next meeting, but you can see where they're doing the, the weighting of how we pay. In the past, they base it on large, or they always base it on large animal and small animal. In the past, it has always been 50-50. Well, the new stats that you can see that they have now, they're saying that the, the, the sh there has been a shift and change of uh, demand, I guess, in, the, in the, uh, at the clinic. And now they're proposing to change it 60-40. Uh, so 60% uh, small animal and 40% large animal due to basically, I guess, there's less livestock out there now. And they're saying there's more of a demand at the um, for small animals, um, so that does change what our rates will be or what we pay. Uh, you can see the town of Swan River in the past has been 
around $59.82.99. Um, with the changes, uh, well, actually, let's go back to the old one. The, the, the other smaller towns like Manitoba's, Bozeman, and, and um, Benito were excluded. They were just added into their municipality. But now moving forward, um, they will be included because of the small animals in those small communities. But Swan River will see a substantial increase, well, I guess comparatively speaking, uh, would be 71.11.62. So that's what is going to be voted on at our next vet board meeting. So, so my question again is be similar to the other committees and boards. Is, does this board have the authority to change the funding formulas for the municipalities, or do we have, or is there a, a founding document that spells out between the municipalities of how the funding is done? Because um, if it's a similar um, to the airport commission, where the commission doesn't have the authority, like here it sounds like it's a very similar scenario um, that. This is all good and dandy, but if the board does not have the power in their thing, like uh, to me, it's the municipalities that need to come up with the, the changing the founding document if that's what the will of the municipalities are. So I can't answer that question. I actually was wondering if that was if, if those documents exist, or they must exist. They, they must be somewhere. Uh, someone has to come up with um, again because this is like. It's another clear example. Like if you have municipalities that are contributing, there has to be an agreement somewhere versus the, the tail wagging the dog here as to what people are going to be paying. What, what is your meeting? That it's just it's in it's in a couple weeks. So, so there's enough time where our administration might be able to look into it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's more of a information here for everybody to to see and. and and good that you bring, brought that up, uh, and, Mario. And if I remember right, like, because it's a, it was a, uh, as a vet board, it usually had provincial representatives. And if we can't find that, those documents, I'm sure that the provincial vet board, our entity, would have a copy of all those founding agreements for and vet that's, boards. And that's another point there too. Uh, there is not going to be a provincial uh, person on that board anymore. The province has changed some of the, some of the, uh, I guess, the, the actor whatever it is but anyway um, they've removed that person and the board no longer has to have or the clinic does not no longer have to have um, their doctor their uh, uh, what was I going to say there their financials uh, audited any longer that's one part of it I guess but Councillor Gray there are two questions I have where I do that as well one is how does the seven thousand one hundred and eleven dollars compare to what we budgeted for this? It's it's. Uh, Do we budget on the old number of fifty? This will be 000? yeah. We'll or this still is be, for next year. This is for next year. Okay, yeah. that's the first thing. The, the second thing, and following up on something that Councillor Morio said, um, assuming that there's authority, or assuming we should consider it, there's a missing element here which is the population of the RM of Swan Valley West, which resides outside of Swan River, but in the, in the essentially residential area that immediately surrounds us. They're, if they're gonna talk about residential, there's no reason that those persons wouldn't be allocated on the same basis. They're not, they're in exactly the same spot as town, town Swan River, town of Benito, town of Minnesota people, they're really no different and they should be treated the same. Just if you're if there is a principal basis of doing it, I, I I'm I'm per, if there, if it's lawful to do, I'm perfectly willing to have the board do that. They I presume that they've gone through it, done a thoughtful analysis, and come up with a principal basis for doing it. That's the one piece that I think has been missed. Okay, and I and I understand that this is actually does come down from the province. The province is really saying, or to the province or this board or whatever, saying you have the choice this stick with what you had before or you can change it to this but i think that's a good point about any populated area around the town of swan river if it's in arm of swan valley west or Natomas bozeman it has to be treated the same no different in, in any urban area yeah. if you're residential you're residential yeah it should it actually should be residential person so even if you have a yard site out in the arm if you're not a farmer you're not a farmer it's a residential piece of it. yeah 
And if this is driven provincially, um, even add, to me it adds even more caution because then it's the same boat being driven like the, the water conservation district um, issues that we're having where. Although this looks like it was driven by some other principle. Yeah, not. It's, it's not, these these guys didn't come up with this at didn't all. manipulate the numbers. No, not at all. Okay, so I'll wait for that and then I'll take my the information I collected here tonight to that, uh, that board. So thank you. 7.4, Council Committee uh, reports, or Council reports. So I'll start with Councillor Friesen. Nothing. Oh, yes. No, I just wanted to mention uh, thanks for the tent. Went up, lickety split. The guys were there Monday, had it taken down, cleaned up. They did a great job. Hats off to whoever they were. Um, I have an invoice uh, for the hall for two nights of cleaning. It's $200. Okay. Um, Communities in Bloom judges were here Monday. Um, they got to stay at the Super 8 compliments of Naomi and the Super 8 staff. Thank you to Super 8. Um, Monday morning I had Stacy, Glenn and June McKenzie and we did a tour about to the landfill and Carla met us there. She had a big sheet of where everything went. We took a tour. They love going to the landfill. I'm not sure why, but they do. And then we toured about. We took a drive up to the golf course and Harley House food bank. And then I uh, went to Johnny's. Thank you, Johnny, for lunch. Um, then uh, John Dvorak met us there with his 1950 red Ford car <coughs> and drove the judges out to the museum. Actually, he took them for a tour around town, up and down Main Street, and his usual John stuff. And toured about the museum, and um, then we came back into town and went to parks, Rotary Park and the Legion Park. Um, they were very impressed and really couldn't believe that it was the Monday after rodeo because they thought the town looked pretty darn tidy. So hats off to everybody that did their part. And, um, I think that's all I have to report. Good. Rodeo was good. It was. Yeah. Quite a change having everything at the hall, or most things at the hall. But it was good. Okay. Thank you. Call some more. Um, on the 23rd, we had our first committee of the whole, which um, I think went very well. And to have discussions as, as a, the entire council on the topics instead of having our separate committees and then bringing it back here. Uh, going back and forth, so that was pretty good. Uh, the 24th um, had an informal meeting with uh, her, uh, Eileen Clark, uh, who was in town uh, visiting with uh, um, various entities um, that follow under her portfolio. So um, we did have her here for a couple hours, um, which was again, was very receptive. And thank you, uh, Council Gray, uh, for um, setting that up. Um, and, uh, also, been Tony and Mayor Jacobson for joining. Thanks. Um, 25th, um, I attended uh, the grand opening of the uh, Sapatoya Cree Nation's uh, Petro Canyon gas station, which was well attended by um, members from their community and a lot of uh, people from Swan River uh, were in attendance. It was very well organized, and uh, a bunch went down to the Friendship Center for lunch, which was uh, packed place so um, it was very uh, well attended and uh, they're very proud of their uh, accomplishments getting that done with um, they were, um, very proud that that's uh, a second economic um, investment and business that they have on their second uh, urban reserve um, here in Swan River so and they're from gathering in the talks is that they're looking at even expanding that into future uh, business expansions. So, um, then on the Friday, I uh, attended the parade. Um, so thank you, uh, Councillor Friesen, for doing up the float and all that stuff. So thank you very much. And then uh, 
And congratulations, I have to extend out to uh, the Ag Society and the Rodeo Executive for putting on a very good, uh, um, well-run weekend event um, with the, some of the challenges with the arena and stuff like that. I didn't notice any challenges there. Um, from what I heard, uh, events were, um, or attendance was up to record-breaking levels. So, um, so it sounds like it was well attended. Of course, it was not hold out as great as on the Sunday, but it was still well attended. So uh, hats off to that, that organization for putting on a well-run event for the weekend. So brands want to grow uh, as a valid to the rest of the uh, province. So that's all I've got. Okay, thank you. Council McDonald. <laughs> I may or may not have a list, but if I go too long, just nudge me. I um, just want to send my congratulations to Sapatoniak and their um, opening of the Petro Canada gas station. Unfortunately, I was un was unable to be at that opening ceremonies, but on behalf of myself and, and the Chamber of Commerce, we congratulate them. I was on that day, I was um, unveiling the grant that RISE <clears throat> was a part of for the um, model model train at the museum so the uh, rise in partnership with the museum the chamber of commerce uh, put together um, proposals and were successful in a grant of thirty two thousand five hundred dollars for the expansion of the train at the museum that was very interesting i was able to ride the train and uh, and be a part of that unveiling so that was very interesting and kudos to the museum on their work that they're doing with that. Um, congratulations to the Agriculture Society for the Northwest Roundup and Rodeo. It was uh, well received as well as the Chamber of Commerce for putting on the parade. Um, it was nice to see that we're in the big leagues now of having a helicopter provide tours of our community. Um, there were some issues I guess in that regard but I don't think that we should ever stand in the way of, of having outsiders view our entire community um, so kudos to that helicopter operator and hopefully we'll see him in the future um i just have a question i guess in regards to i was cleaning up some of my notes and in regards to our pool public meeting in regards to the pool on april 25th there was a um, suggestion by many um, members of the community of a marketing plan and advertising signage things like that i know that our budgets are tight and already put but hopefully we can look at something for 2020 and, and appease those um, um, the citizens in that regard because i don't think that they're necessarily wrong um, if you'll notice at the chamber of commerce building and the tourism office it was getting a partial facelift so the south side of the building did get refaced and it looks amazing um, that's kind of all the funds that we had but one side at a time I guess um, we'll get it done the parkland tourism I'm just wondering with that regard if Bev Potten has ever given her notice that she's no longer on the parkland board to anybody okay so if somebody can follow up with that so that we can pass a resolution to appoint a, a new committee member or person from the com community to that committee that'd be great in regards to taxes there's been a lot of uproar from some councillors um, in regards to those high high taxes I just want to say that we sat as a as a, as a council and came up with those numbers and I have no no issue no issue defending those numbers, and it is for the greater good of the community. So um, I hope that nobody's getting heckled too bad. Um, maybe I'll stop with one side because um, just in regards to town and vandalism, there's been obviously everybody knows here that there were some issues. Um, I would like to propose resolutions um, to, uh, the creation of bylaws for um, 
a curfew bylaw, and I think that's maybe something that we can discuss. Oh, yeah. we, have a, we do have a curfew bylaw. We have the first one that everyone thought about. Pardon me? So we have the first one that everyone comes from the province of Waterloo first. Okay, so just out of curiosity, how come it's not being enforced? Does anybody know the answer to those, that question? And then... I think, the, I think that's something we should discuss in camera. Yeah, that's fine. I have no issues with that. I didn't realize that we had one. And then just wondering if we have a graffiti bylaw in town as well. For it or against it. <laughs> and those were, and then I guess in regards to talking about um, a camera system, I know that um, the police or the RCMP did make presentations to um, the Chamber of Commerce, and I'm hoping that we can maybe look at that or have them discuss what that might look like um, in the, you know, for the council's perspective too, to take back to committees, necessary committees, um, and things like that. Uh, we had our RISE, RISE committee meeting, and um, out of that meeting, the RISE board has purchased the Minnetona School um, and there's the with the thought to make an incubator out of that so that's something exciting moving forward I'm not gonna I'm sure there's lots of questions and but I don't want to take up all of the time today and just to let you know that their Hudson Bay Rail Associating Association meeting is today and tomorrow unfortunately nobody from our council has gone to it uh, but we did send Stacy, on behalf of RISE and the Chamber of Commerce to represent the town of Swan River and um, so that she's off to that. Um, I'm going to just stop with one half of my list today and that's all I've got. Are you sure? Yeah, that's fine. Council of Delray. What's the for me? Council White. Uh, the, uh, the tour, Council Morial and I went to Dauphin for the opening of their uh, 23, 24 million dollar emergency room, which will be available to all members of the parkland. It certainly has a lot of potential, and extremely uh, complex. Uh, including the whole meeting, which we've talked about uh, today with the RM, which we've talked about, with all the, all the congratulations which have gone, I kudos them all. And uh, I can tell you that I've been in contact with Staff Sergeant. Campbell, one meeting in August over a myriad of uh, thoughts. And so hopefully some of the things that you brought up today, uh, well, you'll be here on the committee, so hopefully we can talk we're about those. Pardon? We're all on that committee now. We'll have to come to the committee <clears throat> I'm going to have lunch with uh, Staff Sergeant uh, Campbell regardless, and if anybody, I'll let you, the committee of the whole know it. If anybody would like to attend, they're more than welcome. And he's, uh, he's purchased property already in town. He's moved to town, so he's here for good. So uh, he's excited about meeting with us. I said later on in August, that sounds good for him. Thank you. That's the shortest one I think you've ever had. Well, I. <laughs> no problem. Thank you. Go back to the week. Councilor Gray. I join with everyone in all of the congratulations, and, and particularly, um, I, I think we've um, had some very quick responses on a, a number of issues, and I think staff or uh, just well done on that um, in terms of taxes um, you know quite candidly nobody I've talked to has had nobody's happy about a 12 percent or 14 percent increase in taxes it's not like we've got people skipping down the street saying yep but most people accept that that's a pretty reasonable basis especially to explain them why it is and what the alternatives are um, if, if, however, there's been considerable distress for support staff, I, I think that's wholly inappropriate. And certainly, I reiterate my view that if, if it's something that's an ongoing problem, uh, it's counselor who should respond to that, and we should hold some kind of public meeting if that's what people need. Uh, but I actually don't think it's necessary. Nobody, I've, there's, there may be occasional individual situations, but for the most part, um, and if people are really in concern, you can get my number, call me. I don't have any problem at all. Um, in terms of the arena, they started making ice. They were, were just in the process of finishing that project. That's, I think, a true success story. Everything appears to be running 
uh, smoothly, our, our procurement process worked properly, everything on that piece seems to have worked um, really well. Now, because I've said that, I will have jinxed it on September the 3rd, ice will go down and we will have no ice or something. <laughs> um, just in terms of recreation, we have the large recreation district meeting coming up in sometime in September. I don't remember exactly the date. We'll get to that more closely. We just, I just had a meeting with the planner who's coming up to help us through that process. Um, but it leads into a secondary a conversation of mine and arises out of what the RM and, and Council um, Deloria, I want to particularly commend him. There is, um, as he noted when, some, when you, your worship said, is there anything anybody else wants to discuss? I think his words were, there's lots to discuss, but I don't think we're ready for it. I think that's exactly right. I think that we have to start talking about shared services, whether it's in terms of fire protection, it's in terms of policing, it's in terms of recreation. I, I think the idea that, that any one of these municipalities is going to go it alone, including us, is foolish. And, and really, we either will um, get together and work cooperatively or alternatively, uh, we'll all go down. Uh, we, the costs will just become overwhelming and we will be unable to provide for them. And so I, I really commend us to trying to convene, even before G5, a meeting with all the municipalities, with whoever wants to come to intelligently talk about shared services, including us being prepared to raise the issues and talk about them in an intelligent way. Now, we may get dead-end responses. We may not get anything. But unless we start that process, the reality is we don't have a lot of opportunity. Uh, yeah, so you, you think it'd be best to do it as, as separate standalone meeting with an agenda and say, here, we're inviting but, but with all the municipalities or one at a time? Like us I think what you do is, is, I think you start with all of them in ones, and then those who are interested in pursuing discussions, you have one-on-one -on -one discussions. If, if all of them are willing, then that's great. But I think it's highly unlikely we're gonna get all of them History tells us that at least one and maybe two would be incredibly unreceptive. Maybe all three, I don't know. But we should that's what we should do. We should we we need to take the bull by the horns because we're really the ones that have to. Nobody else is going to do it, and if we don't do it, we all know what the result is. This is not something that's complicated, it's not something we can't see what the future will bring if we don't do it. We all know what will happen, as do those counters, I suspect. So that's related to recreation and shared services. Uh, settlement services had we had a meeting. I, I went to the next to last one. We've got some like, August events coming up. I'm going to let you know what they are. If you're invited to them. You should come to them. It's an exciting time. We've got lots of booming things happening. They, uh, we've got a, a massive increase in our budget. Uh, we have a uh, from the province. We have um, we're starting a, a, a subsection in the Paw, which leads to our economic development philosophy of being more connected to the north. It is really one of our true success stories, I have to tell you. And you'll send out an invite to us. We will. <laughs> um, the, refet, the, refet, the request for proposals, there's some confusion right now, <laughs> but we're going to have it soon if we don't have it. Uh, we thought we did. We, one of us thought we did, one of us thought we did. So if we we're going to get that organized, that will come to council. Um, uh, it'll be ready to go, uh, I expect, at the next meeting, or I would hope at the next meeting. That's for the arena, for the pool to get, uh, it's for uh, hope to get the engineering services so that we know what we're going to do in 2020 for repairs. Okay. Just in terms of the advertising plan for the pool, um, I, I thought we, we we talked about it a bit clear, but we may need to talk about maybe the whole. It seems to me that until we fix what we've got, we've got lots of time. There's no purpose in sort of advertising now to get to next May, that just makes no sense to me. That we would be better off just to operate the best we can until we get through repairs. And as we're doing the repairs, we will go, we, by that time, we should be in a better planning mode and process. And we should, that part, discuss, is there a purpose in advertising? Is the issue that we have not been getting people out where we should have? Or is it that there just aren't that many people who are gonna come out? It really depends on what our view on that is. Uh, I do wanna talk about um, uh, Minister Clark coming, uh, they phoned me on a very short notice. We put together uh, a piece that she was incredibly happy with. There were I think, six meetings we put together, different groups through the community. I was incredibly happy that everybody here participated. Um, 
RISE participated, the Senior Center participated, all of the things that she's big on. Uh, she talked to the Chamber um, and um, she was incredibly impressed with the Thomas Hunter and its cooperation. Um, I'm not sure that, that that's true of us and our municipal partners, but with, within the town, I think the cooperation is a pretty high level. I think we should be proud of that. Um, and she certainly was impressed. Um, just for everyone's benefit, um, um, Mr. Mayor, we had this short conversation. I'm going to get, get a script. Um, there's a, a certain starting point, particularly where um, anything, if we're dealing with, with anything opening, where it's a public comment, where we could acknowledge that we're on, it was something like we acknowledge we're on um, the tradition of the uh, traditional lands of Treaty Four the Cree people and the traditional homeland of the Métis, something like that, and just an acknowledgement at the beginning of, of each of those speeches in a public context. Um, last three things, I suppose. Um, we talked about an advisory committee of uh, people in town to talk about a number of things which included economic development and so on. Um, we haven't talked about that, but that perhaps is something we can talk about and again at the Committee of the Whole or in Strategic Plan and perhaps at the same time our committee assignments. Lastly, <coughs> in terms of governance, what we would have been the Governance Committee, there's, there's, actually it's not lastly, it's the next to last, the next one's the one after the last, I don't remember. Um, when we refer things to the Committee of the Whole, the report back and, and should be a resolution that says we are resolving this. The minutes of those meetings are really not what gets reported. What should be reported is a resolution that says this is what we're proposing as an action, if anything. Otherwise, there's nothing to report, um, which is fine. If committees can meet and not have a report, but a report starts with what the recommendation is by way of a resolution, and then that resolution gets debated. So, Councilor Gloria, you know, I had a concern about the idea that the minutes would be accepted and that, that we would be accepting everything that was in those minutes. That's not what happens. Those minutes are really not, certainly I'm not sure they should be accepted, but even if they are, it's the resolution that gets to be. That's how, that's how the report comes back from committees, the whole or any committee. Moreover, I'm not sure that reports, and again, uh, because Mr. Kroll and I had a discussion about Roberts, and I, you know, I know pretty well, and I forgot, and I haven't read it for a while, so I reread a lot of it. Um, that acceptance, of, unless it's required by the municipal app, when we get reports, we should simply note in the minutes that the report was received. There's no reason for us to have a resolution to do it because it doesn't do anything. What's necessary is if there's a recommendation for a resolution, that should be contained and we vote then on the resolutions as opposed to the acceptance of minutes. That is as quickly as I can speak, and I speak pretty quickly normally, and that's everything I have to report. All right, well, thank you. And uh, everybody spoke on all the other things with the congratulations and so on. But <clears throat> attending the uh, Saptoya Cree Nation grand opening of the their gas barn was a good event to, to attend. I'm very happy to see that they're moving forward with a lot of opportunities that they can take advantage of. Um, at the rodeo was a good job, you know, done by the whole, all the volunteers. I was talking to the president one day there and, and uh, the volunteers do an outstanding job. They really do. And and they seem to be popping up all over the place there and getting people coming out. They don't have to beg them to come out, so that tells you something. Um, one special event that I was able to attend to, Chief Jedi invited me out to their powwow at Sapatoyak on that same weekend. And uh, it was my first one and it was pretty amazing. And uh, they invited me to be part of the the grand entrance there and and it was a really nice event to be able to attend compliment to you one of their members always comes in the store and he said you know your mayor was out to Bowen and he was really impressed would he be sincere and i said <laughs> i'm sure he was sincere yeah no i was they did a really outstanding job there so but anyways everything else has been spoken about so mr crow if you have anything uh, not really. No. Okay. Uh, just the daily operations going as normal. Uh, I really enjoyed the parade for Swan, for a small town. I thought it was a pretty amazing parade and the rodeo was great. So, yeah, it's good. Good. And, you know, actually, you know, I, I, want, I want to mention that uh, 
thank our frontline staff for all the work they've been doing here all the time, obviously. But I mean, just in the last week of dealing with uh, people that are not always so happy to have to pay for their tax bill, no matter if it's up or, or gone down, then nobody likes to pay taxes. It's a it's a mixed bag between the uh, taxes going up and the uh, and the school tax credit right. changes, and uh, the the clerks have got pretty good at explaining the situation out. So uh, you know people are still going away upset, but not completely angry at right. us anyway. So. All right, thank you. So moving on to uh, eight eight point one. Resolve that the in-kind table and share donations policy be approved. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? Councillor White. I think it's wonderful. Uh, I hope we would disseminate that information to community groups because one of the criteria I read was you had to apply before the event. And if the community knows that, that's wonderful. Invariably, when we get our bills, we start applying for looking for help. So as long as the community gets in our town page or wherever it is, uh, we'll be notified that possibility exists. Councillor Vore. Can we can we just have you mail the policy? I mean, there's probably only a half dozen or maybe a dozen people that we've donated the chairs to in the past. At least mail it out to those people so they know we're applying in advance. It's on the website. Councillor Vore. They can go on the website also. Why. And the Chamber of Commerce has a free website to the corporate community. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 8.2. Whereas Swan Valley St. Peter's Junior A Hockey Club a club have a management agreement with the town of Swan River, the town, to manage the resource room lounge at the Swan River Centennial Arena. And whereas the club is required to provide 80% 80 per, 80 of the profits of the lounge to the town, who is the licensee of the facility, and whereas the club has requested that the profits from the lounge be donated back to the club, therefore be it resolved that the town of Swan River donate any profits received from the Centennial Arena resource room lounge back to the Swan Valley St. Peter Junior Hockey Club each year, provided the club has fulfilled all requirements as set out in the management agreement, as well as have no outstanding balance owing to the town. Moved by Councillor Delorier, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? Um, our, it's just, this might be getting picky in wording, but it's, do we want it to include like just at Swan Valley St. Peter's events? Because here it leaves it wide open to any other event in there that could give them rights to it under that resolution, the way it's worded, if I'm reading it the way I read it. I think it just alludes to the law specifically. Yeah, but if, if, if the there's another- could be used for other events. Okay. Yeah, and the way it's written here, it doesn't differentiate that. It, it's, it's on. So you want to change some of the wording in the resolution then? Uh -huh. it, it, if it's used for other events, it would have an occasional license separate from this, and which we would have to give. You know, because we have the permanent license in there, just like they are. So, if, um, say if Rodeo was in there, that would be, yeah, you know, a separate license. It's a separate license. Our permanent license is only for the lounge, okay. and this resolution covers all the profits that come from the lounge. But if the lounge is used for any other event, for whatever reason, then those profits would go under this resolution. There, there are a couple of technical things about the resolution. I agree with Council Member that it should be for event for monies raised by the Stampeders at Stampede Games. Mm -hmm. That's what's intended. Yeah, not for any other ones. Like say, if the cham chamber there wanted to have a Christmas be. party up in there, right? Um, the Stampeder shouldn't be allowed or have dibs on those profits under. Take a few refresh and read it again. Okay. And then I am then secondly, I'm assuming that would be um, following the uh, agreement or the terms and conditions of our liquor license. So. Okay. 
facility um, second whereas and whereas the club is required to provide 80% of the profits of the lounge to the town who is the licensee of the facility of all Swan Valley Sam Peter games and events. Does that cover that? Did it go? Oh, you? refresh. It did. It's gone. Go ahead, Treasure Gray. Right. There are just two other things. Um, I thought that when we talked about this, we agreed, as we are, one of our things was as well, that any other, that we, that any of the costs that we had associated with it were covered. Now, I know that that's intended here, but I don't see it here. So that as an example, if we have to do new doors, if we do the washrooms or whatever, we would use those monies first. I thought that was what we said. That was part of the discussion. Yeah, like yeah. If any additional expenses, Born by the town to. Oh, it, it, it's kind of alluded to, but I didn't like it to be clear. Would the, would the management agreement not capture? I don't know. I I, not, I think the agreement. I think that master agreement needs to be substantially reworked, like many of our agreements. But but um, I don't think it does. It, it, may, it might, but I don't think it does. There's one. There's one other technical thing. Uh, for me, I would prefer that this read that for the 2018-19 and 2019-20 um, um, seasons, and that each year we revisit it before the other, just because technically I don't think we should be binding all future councils. I, I think that each year we, it's a donation. Otherwise it's part of a contract and I don't think it, I think it, it belies it being a donation. And so for me, my preference would be rather than say each year, it says for the 2018-19 and 2019-20, Twenty um, uh, seasons that that would be the case, and then in 2020 we'll consider the 2020-21 uh, year, and so on. Every every summer we'll consider it. Does the mover and the secondary agree to that? As yep. Delorier and White. Yep. Back. So on the other item that was brought up about the. Um, expenses, is that something that we have to look at into the agreement? Well, I, I think if we put in the resolution that that, uh, that we will keep any associated cost not otherwise provided for, something like that. Okay. That's what, I, uh, for me, that's how I would do it. Because I don't want there to be any dispute that, that if there's some cost associated, whatever it is, that we're taking that out first. So that would be like if they're looking for an expanded liquor license like they had this year, if there's costs for that. Those yeah, I, I think that would go, that is part of the agreement, but I, I, because they cover those costs in their accounting. Yeah. But I was thinking more in terms of things like, um, there was some discussion about the bathrooms and needing to fix them. And so it's not gonna come out of our pocket, that'll come out of either that or they will pay for it in advance. That's right. Over the years you were saying, right? 2018 19 and 2019 20 seasons, right. not years. So, this coming season, we're agreeing that we're going to donate the profits, and the last year, we're agreeing that we're going to donate the profits, and then next summer, we'll revisit for the next year. Okay, I think I have it. If you refresh, I think it should be seven. Okay, so the second change, therefore, be resolved the town is to donate any profits received from the Centennial Arena Resource Room Lounge during Swan Valley Stand Peter Games and events back to the Swan Valley Stand Peter A Hockey Club each during the 2018 19 season and 19 20 season, provided that the club. Has fulfilled all requirements and set out the management agreement as well as have no outstanding balance owing to the town. <clears throat> and that's where, where's, the, where's the element of cost? Minus any costs. Yeah, 
And, and you may be right, Councilman Dewan. I, I think probably you're right. I just, out of an abundance of caution, I don't want any dispute later. Almost something like it could be written into the agreement. It should be in the agreement, but I, I, I'm not sure that it is. It, it, my recollection of the agreement is it's not. This will get drafted now. It's drafting. <laughs> so I hesitate to be critical any more than I already am. I'm sure it's fine. Yes, that's fine. Yeah. I'm sure it's. Okay, so the mover and the seconder agree to the changes? Yep. Okay, for the discussion, all in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> Uh, eight, four, eight, three. <coughs> Excuse me. Result of the town accept the quotation submitted by Redline Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram Limited for a 2017 Dodge Caravan in the amount of $28,807.10 plus applicable taxes. And be it for the result of the town accept the quotation submitted by Capital GMC Buick Cadillac for a 2019 GMC Sierra to half ton in the amount of $28,575 plus applicable taxes. Moved by Councillor Morial, second by Councillor. Just, I just have a question for what's it's on okay. the floor. Do you have a seconder, please? Mm -hmm. Freezing. Discussion. Councillor Gray. Mm -hmm. I keep losing the. the yeah, like the culture of the white girl that first. Uh, I'm assuming, I don't like to assume the local GM dealer couldn't beat whoever, who's capital GM? Is that local? No. So, the, did the local people put in a bid? The GM, were well, they offered the opportunity to put in a bid? Yes. Okay. <coughs> so, we said some of the other things. Councilor Gray, have a question? Yeah, that was exactly my question. Were, were all local, uh, particular local people sent something like, specifically, or was it just they had to? They were all sent. Uh, that's fine. Yeah. Councilor uh, Delorier. Yeah, that's all. The the what's what's the sequence of events? Are we decommissioning a van, or are we are we going to have three, or we are decommissioning the blue one, so it will be sold. So this will be a new van, and we will have the 2008 Orange Caravan as well. And the unit 109, I believe. And the same off the last fall. It's same with the truck. The truck would be uh, we decommission our truck last fall. That's right. And it won't be sold. It's just going to be scrapped. Uh, we're we want to put it in an auction. Okay. And it, Further, uh, Councillor And just so that a uh, clarification, Mr. Cool, just read the, the van that is a 2017, it's a used van with 5,200 kilometers. So, That's correct. Um, that comes with, I imagine, you expect it up, ensuring that there's warranty and all that stuff with it and that you've there verified it in its condition. And, uh, yeah, there's available warranty uh, three years of powertrain. It's, it's all warranties included. And we're not getting like I guess a two-year-old van with 5,200 kilometers on it? Or? The, the only downside of it is that it did have a hill clean on it. So there are some bumps in the roof, but we didn't feel that. Councilor Delorier. It's used as an it had a previous owner, or it was a demo model at the dealership? Previous owner. Okay. Councilor Gray. Um, so was there other criteria? Did we do our new procurement process? Was there other criteria? I kept the criteria. We, we found when we, like in over the past few years, the, the more detail I got with my criteria, the harder it was to get what we wanted. Or without going severely over budget, so we 
we forced them to, not force them, we gave them the option to give us use the options plus. I, I just meant our, our assessment tool in terms of what we were going to assess. Did we assess anything other than price? Uh, <laughs> as long as they met the criteria, which I say was very short. So, so that's a short answer. No. And, and explain to me in terms of the caravan, how a $2,400 saving is worth it in terms of um, the third option, because it's only $2,400 difference. And so we're getting a two-year-old van that is 5,200 kilometers for $2,400. Seems yeah. to me like not I, tremendous I guess, value. I guess I did. I didn't really have to give a give options for these because uh, every other one is over my budget of thirty-two thousand dollars. I don't know what that means. Our expenditure for our capital expenditure and our budget for the van is thirty-two thousand dollars. The only one that is under that is the one that's recommended. According to what are we budgeted for was 32 and the one that is 33 and the one that's recommended is 30. Yes. So under what we budgeted we, for. we could buy the brand new van with zero kilometers, <laughs> but I would have to ask for thirteen hundred four hundred and fifty three dollars. Fourteen hundred, yeah. Over budget. Wouldn't that be a better deal though? Or sorry, fourteen. I stuck to this. So that ties into my because that ties into my concern. Right. It's just like you got a, a two year old used van <laughs> with fifty like are we is it a lemon that's been put out there already that's going back? Um we know that there's hail damage on the roof already. Um but like for the twenty four hundred dollars, like the value for dollar yet, even though it's the fourteen hundred dollars above our capital budget, um to me it that's a more value for dollar, like we get um, the, the extended or the two years of additional warranty that's under the kilometers um, for change. Okay. I guess, yeah, we didn't have, like, I didn't, we don't demo, really. you know, we looked at it, just have, we didn't take it for a drive. Okay. So, what's the will of counsel if you want to well, change? And ask this one question. Go ahead. Um, Mr. Crowell. Assuming we decided to spend $32,453.39, could we find $1,452.39 in our budget? If not, so still, still, still really just take your more out of reserve. Yeah, $1,400. We, we, we can reserve. find it. That's the issue. Yeah. To me, that's a no brainer. Then. I, th I think early on, I, I mean, obviously, I'm still fairly new here, but early on, I know. Uh, the, the administration, the public works director, and the, uh, and the CFO are both under the impression that we were to stick with budget. So You're I think that's right. why the recommendation came back that this is this is under budget. So. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, that's I like the the recommendation. I just think that in totality. Council Mario, I think it, the answer is right there because it didn't we budget thirty two thousand for the pickup too also. Uh, thirty. Or thirty. So. Yeah. I thought those three two so. three dollars over counselor Friesen. Um I'm not a <clears throat> car person, but what what's the difference between SXT and C V P options? Okay. Cheap and luxury. Yeah. So no, cheap the, and even cheap. So the mover and the seconder are willing what to make really amends to this that resolution. But I I move that. Uh, I believe you moved it. Councilor Freeze and seconded. Um, I'm willing to. So that's the will of council, and we'll work on it so we can make amendment. I'm willing to make the amendment to uh, change the. Um, I think there needs to be a second piece that, that increases the budget to $33,500 for the purchase of the van. That's how I think we should do it. But we'd have to change the. Well, can we do that? I, I actually think so far we can create this from doing that. Now that I think about it. Again, yeah, you're right. I know I'm sorry. That's what the resolution read. I just my brain didn't work. Sorry. Change it from the to 2019 Dodge Caravan in the amount of the yes. whatever amount. Yeah. It's kind of an option.
that's a, the vote budget, that's the one you would have recommended. Yes. I, I, I commend you on keeping to the budget. That's fantastic. You do. Can't do it again. Oh, yeah. Don't worry. It's just joke. No. It's just the right way to do it. But, the mark. You were good with it. You said it was Okay, sure, I did. Yeah, I'm good with it. I'm a little blob sheet picking the color. Not flaming orange. I like our orange. If you want to do that, it's. Okay, so uh, I'll read the, the result. Result of the town's. The Sorry? That's that one's not changed yet. It's changed with. Uh, is that from Redline as well? Yeah. Oh, okay. But the, the amount is wrong. Yeah. You still got 31,000 instead of 33. Yeah. So yeah. what we'll is the new one, but we want the old price. <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke. It's a joke. <laughs> price no, is that's correct. That's correct. Some applicable oh, plus, oh. yes, that's right, too. Yeah. Okay, so Resolve the Town accept the quotation submitted by Red Lion Chrysler D Dodge Jeep Ram Limited. I feel like I'm doing a commercial. For 2019 Dodge Caravan CPP in the amount of 31264 and $0.85 plus applicable taxes. And that's agreed on by the mover and the seconder. Okay. Further discussion? Council uh, Royal. I just want to make it known that it's not a selfish issue from, from my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is a value for dollar in the long run the decision, not big sponsor. So we wanted us to have the day, but you only want to. Okay. Thank, thank you, Council uh, Mario, for that. Uh, 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 all in favor? It's Kerry. Result from Town Swan River accept the quotation submitted by Northern Specialties for a Graco 3400 line stripper. Starting the stripper? Striper. In the amount of $5,500 plus applicable taxes. Moved by Councillor Gray, second by Councillor Lintoni. Discussion? Councillor Morio. So this upgraded model will outdo the job with that thing we got right now? Yeah. Yes, we we did put every model on the on the line when we bought the old one. Uh, this one, the mechanics spec over day one, and we'll, we'll we'll do the job. And and basically, to get the to fix the current one we got is almost the price of buying this brand new. The motor is gone. Done deal. Okay. Next discussion. All in favor? It's carried. And point one resulted the purchase policy procurement be read a second time. Moved by Councillor. When was it read the first? Oh, maybe I was not here. I can't remember what it was. So well, moved by. The first one was the original one that we had passed oh, okay. before. That was a, but that was a buy. It was supposed to be a buy. Can I have a more? Can I suggest we we remove all of this to a committee of the whole? For a resolution to come back, which the resolution will be that the attached um, be the bylaw, something like that, because um, I think there are parts of, of uh, Mr. Kroll's draft that are really um, helpful. There are parts that I like from our previous one, and there are additional pieces that I think we should add to it. And I think a better place to do it is to do it in a detailed discussion, not here, where we would have to, because going through it line by line here is not something that would be helpful. If that's, yeah, if everybody's in agreement with that. Because right, right now it's showing two proposed policies of the old one and the new one. Oh, well, we come up with one, one and bring start it back. over. Yeah, I would agree yeah. if that's the proper. Rather than trying to do it all for the third reading, that's. Well, because we're going to get the old we're gonna get the old one through, and there are things that we should have put in from, we might as well do it right the first time. We're now following a process that's pretty good. Let's just get this one perfectly right. Well, that's perfectly good. Okay, so then we'll save that for our committee of a whole and we'll save that for our next uh, 
Eleven point <clears throat> one. We resolve that the council is here follows by hereby approve for payment general account check number twenty four six fifty two to twenty four eight zero eight for a total of three hundred seventeen thousand seventy eight cents payroll account checks number forty four ninety eight to number forty five zero three for a total of one hundred sixteen thousand nine hundred forty five and fifty two cents motion moved by councillor Lentoni seconded by Councillor Lynn Florio. <clears throat> Discussion? Questions? You see the explanation? Councillor Florio. Um, Mr. Poole, the one, the two checks with Joe Johnson, um, that looks like it appears to be fixing one piece of equipment. Yep. That's, that was the transmission that went out of the trackless, so the sidewalk cleaner slash sander slash lower. Okay. It's a expensive piece of machinery. So to answer that. And then the second question I had um, under the check number 24685 um, for the beads of purchases, there's two purchases with flags. Um, are those duplicates or do we, why well, can't we coordinate between like when the town, like Public Works purchases flags from Main Street and Fire Hall and all that? To have a bulk deal instead of each department buying separately. Are both of those for the fire hall? Uh, well, it says June 8th uh, flags for fire hall and then May 30th flags for fire hall. I guess I wouldn't know about the fire hall flag purchase, but I guess the flags are those. I don't know. So I'm just thinking that this in future is that. Departments, if they're going to do something that's can, um, similar purchase, that it's done on one big purchase. Yeah. Okay. Councillor Antoni. Just what do you know what those flags may be the, for? It, each one says flags for fire hall. It's incredible because Chamber of Commerce needed a town of Swan River flag. <laughs> we don't have one, but yet. Seems like a lot of money for flags. Anybody know what those are? I got to get back to you. Can we get an explanation on that? No. We can, yeah. It's a certain amount of autonomy of the different departments. I didn't realize that, uh, that they were purchasing flags like this. Well, $900 in flags. Maybe the fire group. Like I know when we replaced, was it last year? For the thing that goes outrageous price that we paid for flags, but it's yeah, yeah. And this year we only we only had to replace a couple, but we got mm. we tried a lower quality supplier, I guess. And we didn't really we didn't try to we paid a fraction of the price. Okay. But if we can follow up and then in future coordinate that those type of purchases. Further discussion, Councilor uh, Delorier. Not to pick on the fire department too much, but uh, do we not sell desks somewhere here in town? I assume this must have been bought with for, for, uh, for the fire hall, but uh, Visa or something, $732 for a desk from Staples. Just seems... Yeah, I, I know he looked locally for it. Did he? Yeah, okay. They were meant $1,000 okay. or something like that. that was, from what I understand, that was the cheapest he could find. But, yeah, he called okay. me and asked me for contact with Little Staples because okay. he couldn't find one cheap enough. So. And okay. they needed a desk. I was using before. This other one fell down and broke. It was an old. How do you break it? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> that was a question I had too. Okay, for the question, just a counselor of Gray. There's one in here. It wasn't actually a question. Um, I'm trusting that we talked the amount for the for the um, tent is extraordinarily that's an incredibly good deal just as I was surprised about the flags and so on uh, I'm assuming we've booked them for next year already we can we should right John I mean that's well I just I'm just saying for a thousand bucks for a tent that's an unbelievably good value that's not okay well Two thousand because there was a deposit, I guess. Yeah. But even two thousand right. is incredibly <clears throat> inexpensive, and we should make sure we have it for next year, so there's no dispute. 
Council tomorrow. So with, with that tent, I guess, like I'm, I'm sure the Ag Society will do their event review and stuff like that. But the, uh, Council Priest, if you want to find out, see if that tent was adequate, like big enough or... It was good. We just didn't have a position in the right place. It's got to go this way, but no, because it was interfering with the coming and going of the down on the farm. But yeah. that's not going to be because when, when, I, when I went there, it was standing room outside the tent. That so, was the finals, right? No, nope, this was on a Saturday morning or whatever. So, but I didn't see it Saturday morning. Sorry. Okay. So you'll find out about that. Sure. Any further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Oh, I, I had a question. Uh, I'll grant it. You will grant it? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You're right. Um, Curse bouncers and inflatables. It says 3,087 Canada's new bouncers. But on the check thing, it's not that much. Because that's, that, remember the, that was the wrong amount? Right. So is this the one that's voided? Because the three thousand one should be voided, yeah, I believe. Yes, it should. Because that it's could a, be just the updated explanation. I'd have to ask Terry. Okay, because I'm pretty sure. Well, I know it was only two thousand something. <coughs> okay, check. Oh, so great. It just when I went through it, I, I didn't actually look at the check to make, but I saw Kennedy bouncers, and I have to think. <laughs> Two thousand, three thousand dollars for people at a, at a party. That's pretty high. You need some pretty. <laughs> but, uh, but then I saw what it was secure. for, and I realized that it wasn't bouncers in the way I. Mr. Cole thought the same thing. Mm. I kept thinking, security. Why do you need that? Mm. Exactly. Okay, so I think that we passed that resolution already. So, uh, no notice the motions are known. Uh, so I guess that is it. So I will. Are we going to go into camera to discuss something Council in 21 to discuss? Actually, there's two things we probably should discuss. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we will pursue to section, what is it? 52, 52 municipal act. Municipal act is yeah. section 52. Yeah. Go into committee. Moved by Councillor Gray, second yes. by Councillor Morio. All in favor? It's carried. Thank you. Did you do that?